Welcome back to Axolotl Army. Today's video is all about regeneration. This video is definitely going to be way more technical than my other videos, but if you're interested in why axolotls regenerate or how it's done, keep watching and I'll explain to you guys how these amazing creatures actually regenerate limbs. It's thought that the common day axolotl is a descendant of an amphibian known as the amphibimus. The skull shape is almost identical except for the eyes. The amphibimus had much larger eyes and was thought to breathe through its skin, meaning he always had to stay in damp areas. There are many videos circulating the internet saying that axolotls can regenerate any limb as many times as it wants and it will be perfect every time. Whether it be its extremities, spinal cord, heart, or brain, these videos claim that axolotls can regenerate it. While these creatures may be amazing at regenerating, much of what these videos claim are actually myths. For example, my axolotl corduroy was missing a hand and gills when I rescued him from a pet store, and they refused to give me a discount because they said that he would grow them back perfectly. His hand did grow back, but with an extra finger that's not supposed to be there. And he's still missing one whole gill stock that will never grow because the other gills that did grow back grew in a twisted manner. It's also common for oxalotl cells to overreact and regenerate too much. Your oxalotl could scrape its fragile skin on something and wind up with a fifth leg if you're not careful enough about what goes in your tank. I'll talk more about this later, but it all depends on the damage done and how the oxalotl's body responds to the injury. Like humans, axolotls use special stem cells known as fibroblasts to regenerate skin cells, and in the axolotl's case, muscle and bone. Although limb skin fibroblasts can support limb regeneration, cells from different positions around the limb circumference are different in their positional identities. In fact, regeneration of the entire limb requires the interactions of fibroblast-derived blastema cells from opposite sides of the limb, for example, anterior and posterior, in order to regenerate a normal limb pattern. So basically, regeneration depends on the severity of the damage done to the axolotl. Now, the reason humans have only been able to achieve regeneration in only acute injuries is because, as we age, degenerative processes such as acute and chronic injuries, like sun exposure, continue to occur while we gradually lose our regenerative capabilities. Life requires a balance between the processes that damage our tissue and the regenerative mechanisms that repair the damage. Now, as to the question of whether regenerated tissues are young or old, casual observation suggests that regenerated tissue is morphologically distinct from old stump skin that is thicker and has more dermal connective tissue. So, although the overall structure of the regenerated skin has characteristics of the less complex skin of a younger axolotl, the cells within the tissue may still be the same biological age as those within the adjacent old skin. As far as regeneration in the brain, yes, it is true that axolotls can regenerate several populations of neurons present before injury. It remains, however, unclear whether neuronal diversity, intricate tissue architecture, and axonal connectivity can be regenerated. As a biopsychology cognitive neuroscience major, I know that failure to reestablish the long distance axonal tracks will result in loss of function of the organ or limb. Axons are what relay electrical messages to and from the brain to other areas in the body. So without this ability, the organ or limb is rendered useless. So I hope that this video was informative, and if you guys have any questions, comment below or DM me on Instagram. I am there as Axolotl Army.